All right, so we're going to take a slightly different turn here and talk about configuration management and validation and how Cloud Vision and some of the other tooling that we're integrating with uh, can help with that. So the first thing is, you know, networking is really tough. I mean, I think most people have fat finger to config at some point during their networking career. Uh, we're all human. It's, it just happens. And then when you fat finger a config and you're doing automation, that can become even worse, right? So now instead of messing up one switch, I messed up 100 switches all at once. And so to Doug's earlier point about config rollback, that's really nice to have this feature where I can go in, put in a config change, and if it messed up, it'll roll back in 30 seconds and make sure that we, we can hopefully get back to a working state. But what if we can do something more proactive, right? We want to get in and make sure we don't make that mistake to begin with. I mean, obviously things will happen, but what can we do to try to mitigate the possibility of, of making those errors uh, before I put that change into my network? And so we're going to work through this kind of flow here in a demo and here in a second. And so what we're going to do is actually incorporate a whole bunch of different tools. We're going to leverage Ansible, which is something that most people are familiar with as a DevOps tool to push these configuration changes. Uh, now, Cloud Vision does have a mechanism to manage configs, and that's actually going to be incorporated here. But we're also open to uh, allowing other tools such as Ansible or Puppet or Chef or Salt or whatever it is integrate with Cloud Vision so we can still maintain the same DevOps uh, mindset and tooling that we might be already using. But then the kind of the interesting step here is we're also going to validate these configs. So we're going to leverage another open source tool, which is called Batfish, which is then going to take those configs that we've generated through Ansible and make sure that we haven't made a mistake uh, for the cases that we've kind of already put out, laid out from a test uh, standpoint. Then we'll use Cloud Vision to then deploy those configs. And also, as we saw earlier, Cloud Vision has the ability to monitor everything in real time. So it creates this nice virtual cycle. And to Doug's earlier slide about the NetOps um, maturity model, this kind of plays into that, how we can progress along that maturity model and become more and more uh, Net NetOps mature, I guess, is the term. So here's the actual flow. We're going to make an ACL change through Ansible. So I'm going to go into my Ansible uh, playbook or my Ansible role. I'm going to change up my ACLs to block a, a specific IP address. We're going to generate configlets. So configlets for us are just snippets of config that we later on combine into your overall running config for your device. Right? So Cloud Vision breaks up your config into modular chunks, which we then recombine into being uh, your full running config. So we'll generate some configlets based on the Ansible playbook to implement this ACL change. Then we're going to validate these ACLs and make sure we're not blocking access to a server that we're supposed to have access to. Once we do that, we're going to push the configlet into Cloud Vision through Ansible. So Ansible is still kind of the driver here. It's going to contact Cloud Vision and shove these new configlets into the Cloud Vision's management system. Then we'll use uh, Cloud Vision's change control, where you saw Lavanya use earlier, to actually manage the change control process, push these new configs out to my network, and then we can monitor everything. Okay. So if we could switch over to the demo machine. Thank you. <coughs> so what I'm going to do is start off here in uh, Ansible. So let's pop over here. And what I have is uh, my current playbook that's listing out all of my uh, different ACLs, sorry, here, uh, that are currently in my source of truth. So here I'm using Ansible as my source of truth for all of my configuration data. And what I'm going to do, I, you know, so I didn't mess anything up, I'm going to uncomment uh, one of the ACL lines that we're going to then generate into the, to the Ansible config. And what I'm also going to show you here is the playbook that we're going to run to generate the configs also has this assertion statement in here. And what this is basically doing is saying, hey, I want to make sure that I can still access this server after I generate my configs. Right? And this is all before I actually touch the network. So we're not pushing anything to the network yet. We're just generating the configs. And so let's kick that off here. I'm going to run my Ansible playbook. Oh, I might have timed out, so give me a sec. I think uh, SSH timed out on me. Let's do that. Yeah. Let's make this bigger. All right. Let me just resize this. All right, so let's run our playbook. OK, so when I run this playbook, what's going to happen, the first thing it's doing is it's creating those config files based on, that, uh, based on the Ansible YAML that I showed you a second ago. 
Uh, it's creating a, an example network. So this is Batfish actually modeling the network based on the configs that were generated. And now you can see that's kicking back an error and saying it's failing to actually push this config into Cloud Vision to be deployed because it noticed that, hey, you messed up your ACL, you blocked access to that server you were supposed to maintain access to. So what I'm going to do now is come back over here and fix my mistake. So I'm going to say, oh yeah, I wasn't supposed to block this IP address, I was supposed to block this IP address, right? So I'm changing my ACLs in my YAML file, I'm going to run the playbook again and type in my password again. And so you're going to see it's going to go through the same process. It's generating the configs. It's setting up a modelized network. Uh, and now it's going to go through and say, hey, yep, I can still access that server that you were supposed to access based on the, the Ansible definition I gave earlier. Now it's actually going to Cloud Vision. So now Ansible is contacting Cloud Vision. It's gathering data about what configs and stuff are already in the Cloud Vision database. And then it's going to push this new configlet into my Cloud Vision uh, management service. So this takes a second or two for it to, to push the configlets in. Uh, and then I'll come over to Cloud Vision and we'll see this configlet being pushed in. So I just got to wait about two more seconds here, I think, and it'll probably uh, finish the playbook. There we go. So let's come over here to Cloud Vision and we're going to look at our configlets. Let me back out of here. And if I go to this ACL configlet, uh, I'm going to see that it generated this new ACL. So this exactly matches the ACL that I put in my Ansible playbook earlier. And if I come back over here to change history, so Cloud Vision is also serving as this kind of network source of truth in that it can track changes happening in my configs and configlets over time. So I can go back here and see the diff, and I can see that new ACL entry that was put in, when it was put in, who put it in, so I can actually check, track these config changes that are happening in my network. And because this configlet was already applied to four of my devices in the network topology, it automatically created a task for me here saying, hey, here's four switches that have those ACL rules that you just modified. Now you're ready to put in a change control to execute this new ACL policy. So I'm going to create a change control with those four tasks. Uh, and just like you saw Lavanya do earlier, review and approve. So I'm going to review these changes that uh, I just uh, implemented through that configlet and approve that change and execute. So now I'm sticking my new ACL policy into the network, but before I did anything, before it even showed up here on the dashboard for me to approve the change, we validated that nothing was going to break. We validated that our, our, our policies were going to adhere. Yep. I think I missed it. Where, yeah. where did you, how are you actually testing it? I saw there was mm -hmm. like a, a test model. Yes. But how? Where is that test sure. network actually living? Yeah, so let, let me back up because maybe I, I went a little quick. So um, let's pull up the slide here. So we're leveraging this Batfish module. So Batfish is an open source project that does network modeling and validation. So essentially, it has a whole set of algorithms in there that can take your configs, and then you can run queries and validations and assertions against the model that it creates of the network. And whether or not those uh, assertions pass, you know, it'll do the next step on your playbook, right? So, so Batfish was kind of the key component there that said, hey, I took your configs, I ran it through your assertions and made sure that everything you said should be, be true is true. And that can be for, you know, an ACL thing like I did here. It could be for making sure BGP neighbors are still going to be alive uh, or AS numbers are allowed through or not allowed through. So it's, it's very flexible in the number of um, network queries it can do and assert based on and the it, config. And it goes and grabs your current config first and puts that into the... So this is using a config that's stored on disk. So that's why I generated the config with Ansible first. That config that I generated, that's kind of be the, the config that I want to push out. Mm -hmm. It's kind of a pre-validation, not a post-validation, right? So I'm, I'm making sure that the change I'm implementing, I'm going to implement, uh, looks good before I push it out into the network. Uh, and if you, thought, if you look at Doug's earlier slide, one of the kind of early stages of that net, NetOps maturity model is we want to first kind of do this read-only where I'm going to just grab all the configs from my network, and then I could run it through something like Batfish and model and validate things on my existing configs before I actually go mucking around with changing things, right? So it's a nice way of actually doing some validation before uh, I touch the live network. You know, one, one thing I, I think hopefully everybody gleaned from Ken's session, we test a lot here. Right? The, the humming when you walked in was you know, over 100,000 tests a day running in the multi-megawatt data center in the corner of the building and the other 1,000 plus racks down the street. Um, how many people test network configurations before they push them to prod? 
the lesson we learned in software development over the last two decades, the reason, one of the key reasons DevOps exists as a practice was test, then push to stage, then test again, then push to a canary and test again, then run, pro then scale across prod. How do we apply software principles that have worked reliably to build the environments we depend on in the last two decades? How do we bring that to networking? Why do we allow network engineers to test in prod with fingers on keyboard, banging out SSH commands that could absolutely destroy your network? And we take that for granted and somehow accept that that's okay. We need to change that. All right, with that, um, I think we'll go back to the slides and I'll hand it off to Prashant. Uh, excuse me. Do you yeah. do it only for maintenance releases? Also for the uh, sorry for the major release, you also do hitless upgrades. Uh, we can do hitless upgrades. It, it doesn't matter which which whether you're going from maintenance to a feature release or maintenance to maintenance. That's just a standard kind of kind of feature. So how often your customers are doing these upgrades normally, based on your experience? Maybe Ken. I don't know if you have a. I can say this, right. while you sat here, several thousand went out in some of the largest cloud providers. <coughs> I just about guarantee that while we sat here, several thousand switches in the core of the internet services we all depend on were upgraded. 